today's topic is from that is premature rupture of membrane we will discuss in this uh, discussion difficulties controversies management challenges and evidence based solution what is prom prom is the rupture of membrane before the onset of labor it means that when the membrane's rupture or leaking of the liquor occur before the onset of uterine contractions it is called premature rupture of membranes it can be termed it can be preterm and it can be pre viable in age the term prom is when their membranes rupture between 37 to 42 weeks it is called term prom when it ruptures between 24 to 37 weeks it is called pre prom and the pre viable prom is the rupture of membrane before 24 weeks there are lots of difficulties in the diagnosis of the prom as well as in the management and there are controversies about the use of corticosteroids use of prophylactic antibiotics use of tocolytics and active versus expectant treatment the diagnostic difficulties are in the conformation of the prom itself and then the conformation of the chorea amnionitis which is the commonest complication associated with morbidity and mortality in the mother as well as in the newborn the diagnosis is usually made by history and examination in the history there is a typical history of sudden gush of liquor followed by persistent leakage and then when you do sterile per speculum examination we can see the liquor coming through the os that is the only confirmatory test which only confirmatory confirmatory clinical test in this condition we should avoid the digital examination because there are chances of having chorea amnionitis the test which usually the test which are usually performed to confirm the diagnosis are from or various but they have got different sensitivities and specificity the most reliable test is the the most reliable test is the insulin like growth factor binding protein 1 which has got sensitivity of 85 to 100 percent and specificity about 71 to 95 percent there are other tests like nitrazine test the fetal fibronectin test front test etc but they have got they are not they are not very specific in the confirmation of the diagnosis the controversies exist are the use of corticosteroids there is a good evidence to recommend use of maternal corticosteroids before 34 weeks antenatal corticosteroids reduce the risk of respiratory distress syndrome intraventricular hemorrhage in the newborn and necrotizing enterocolitis and there are there are less or no risk of increase in the infection either to the mother or the baby the multiple courses of antenatal corticosteroids for preterm birth trial did not demonstrate improvement in neonatal respiratory outcome following repeat doses of antenatal corticosteroids then the second controversy exists for the use of antibiotics the oracle uh, one trial as well as the season systematic review suggests that treatment with erythr- erythromycin 250 mg qid for 10 days will significantly improve respiratory infection delay the onset of labor cerebral morbidity but no significant improvement in neonatal mortality use of stocolytics also remains the controversial uh, point for discussion many years and it, there is no good evidence to support the use of tocolysis because many trials have proved that the tocolysis does not increase the latency however therapeutic tocolysis at least for 48 hours is acceptable if it is advanced it is if it is advocated in the absence of chorionitis or maternal fetal transport to tertiary center is required what are the management controversies the management controversies mean the expectant as well as the active treatment expectant treatment is that when we just uh, do the observation treatment and we do, don't uh, interfere with the uh, uh, with the 
with the problem and with the prom and then we wait for the our spontaneous either spontaneous labor or waiting for the uh, uh, start, start of uterine contractions the active treatment is the aggressive treatment where we we intervene and we can uh, we can uh, inter we can augment we can induce or we can augment the labor by using oxytocin drugs the risk the risk to the mothers are preterm labor Choreomyelitis, abrupt supracenter, and psychological sequelae. The risks to the fetus are prematurity, respiratory distress syndrome, necrotizing and pterocolitis, intraventricular hemorrhage, neonatal oligohydramnia, neonatal oligohydramnia tetrate, including flattened faces, limb positional def uh, deformities, pulmonary hypoplasia, and impaired fetal growth. Fetal hypoxia due to cord compression, cord prolapse, and abrupt present. Aggressive man management is the induction or augment augmentation respective of period of gestation, and this is done in the specific conditions like the, when there is fetal distress, when we, we want to deliver the baby earlier and we cannot wait for the conservative treatment. These conditions are the fetal distress, Choreomyelitis, abrupt suppressant, preterm labor, if requested by the parents in the face of marked fetal immaturity, that is the prom resulting in the in the in the woman less than twenty four weeks of gestation. Management at the term, management at term has been shifted from expectant towards active treatment. Many studies show that expectant management was associated with increased risk of neonatal infection. General evidence suggests that immediate induction is associated with maternal and neonatal infection and shorter latency period. Mode of delivery is not influenced. Term prom study. This is a very famous study which com which comprised four group. The one group, the four arms were uh, uh, decided, and this was the randomized control. Uh, study in this there are four groups there were four groups in, in one group there was uh, immediate induction was done with IV oxytocin in in the second group immediate induction with prostaglandins then in the third group expectant treatment up to four days followed by oxytocin induction expectant treatment up to four days followed by induction with vaginal prostaglandin no group showed statistical difference of rate of cesarean section or spontaneous vaginal delivery. However, there was slightly increase in the neonatal sepsis in expectant group. The, the four points worthy of separate mention. Plus, prostaglandin did not reduce the subsequent need for oxytocin. Only a minority of patients, that is 18% randomized to expectant treatment, waited four days before induction. Four babies' death in trial was in expectant management arm. View of the women participating in the trial showed preference towards active treatment. What is the management between 34 to 37 weeks? Growing evidence showed that prolongation gestation Prolongation of gestation before 34 weeks provide little benefit in the term in terms of improved neonatal mortality and morbidity. From from 24 to 34 weeks in this group of the women, uh, uh, the usually the conservative management is recommended unless until it is indicated to do the aggressive treatment or the active treatment. From less than 24 weeks, that is the pre viable prom. In this group of the women, the management is not clear. We, we have to individualize the management in different patient. Patient should, wishes should be respected. Neonatal survival is less than 30%. Neonatal, normal neonatal development less than 30% at 12 months follow up. Very poor prognosis. Median latency period is 9 to 6 to 9 days but may be prolonged to 90 days. Risk of pulmonary hyper hypoplasia even if the latency period is prolonged. Conclusion 
the preterm labor preterm premature rupture of membranes contributes to one third of preterm births and it is the leading identifiable cause of prematurity and sequelae. My, microbial invasion of the amniotic cavity can be identified in 33% of the women pres presenting with prom, pre prom and will be present in 70% in at the onset of labor following retency period. Therefore, close surveillance for evidence of infection should be the mainstay of conservative management of pre prom. Diagnosis of pre prom should be via uh, a speculum examination. Digital examination should not be done and it should always be avoided. Detection of fibronectin or IGF BP1 in the vaginal secretion may add, may add diagnosis where history and clinical examination are equi equivocal. Routine administration of oral erythromycin to patients with PROM will significantly increase the latency period and improve uh, neonatal respiratory mobility. Administration of antenatal corticosteroids to women presenting with pre-PROM improves neonatal outcome without increasing the risk of infection. There is no evidence regarding the safety or benefit of tocolysis in women with PROM. Pre-PROM should there be used with great caution as onset of contraction in pre-prom commonly heralds the presence of intrauterine infection. Conservative management to prolong gestation should be performed in the absence of evidence of infection. There is currently no evidence regarding the risk and benefits of prolongation of gestation beyond 34 weeks of gestation.